Step one, I gotta leave the vehicle shut off because if it gets left on my lift overnight, I don't wanna have the key on and have it neutral. So we're gonna put the vehicle in neutral from down yonder. And you gotta pick your battles when you're working on rotted out vehicles. What are you gonna touch? What's gonna break? And in this case, we don't wanna break the shift cable. So it's got some kind of funky end on it. I can't get the clip to release. So we're gonna do it the next easiest way is just take the linkage off the side of the training. I guess one thing we could do is unhook the battery, put it neutral and all that, but the guy's inspection is due. Well, I guess it doesn't matter either because we need to clear the codes. I guess I should have thought about that, huh? Let's just wiggle this little fella right off. We'll take the whole lever. Lever 2000. Who remembers that soap, huh? Let's in park. We'll reach right up here with our left-handed adjustable wrench. Our end, we're in neutral. Now we can rotate the dry shaft. And the reason we need to rotate the dry shaft is because it's in our way. So we'll get all these crack loose. Use inertia. These aluminium shafts. You guys are always talking crap about my weld job. Look at some of this. It's factory, huh? Um, we got to take this off because it just gives us more room. But what was I saying? Oh yeah, the aluminium shafts are pain because you can't get a socket up in here. So we're going to use a little wrench. You could do it without it being a neutral, I suppose, but I don't know. Spin those out. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Grab a little screwdriver. Give her a little what? Oh, oh. What? Give her one of them. Slide her out, make sure any caps don't stick. Hmm, sticky little U joint. If you don't have one of those, it's gonna leak all over. But if you have one, she won't leave a drop. That's just how it goes. I guarantee if we didn't have that thing out there and ready, it would have been a mess. Oh, let's find some kind of prying apparatus here. We need to unhook this vapor line and we need to unhook this fuel line. I thought these just went like so. What do I know? Let me go get something to poke and pry with. Let's see if we can get a prying apparatus right here. Flick the little ears back. Flick your ears back. And then give her a little what's up. Take that one off. And then we gotta do that fuel line. Let me let the car down a little. Same thing, we'll pry up under here. Oops, sorry, I didn't mean to bump into you. But you're right in my way. Wish we didn't have to reinvent the quick disconnect like every new model here. I'm sick of trying to figure all these ones out. Oh, that was my head. Okay, cover your eyes because it might have fuel pressure still. Nope, we already drained it off. Oh, great, we don't have a bucket. We got Perfect. Right in the bucket, first try. The next million dollar question, will the straps come loose? Maybe. It's always the answer. Oh, yee-haw. That one came around. Let's check the other one. <laughs> Yeehaw times two. That one came right out. Awesome. So now we just gotta get the filler neck unhooked and we're out of here. There's only room for one big head in here. We need to unhook the hose clamp here. Unhook the hose clamp here, and then that vent tube that's way up at the top there. It's just held in a little plastic retainer. We'll unhook it. We'll cut the zip tie, and then that should be it. And the good news is, the clamps are facing the box, so it makes them super convenient. <laughs> Said no one ever. I don't know why they do that. It must be something during assembly. 
and we'll cut the zip ties. It's all factory, folks. Five sixteenths, quarter inch. That's what you need to loosen them up. And you do slide right off, being stainless uh, filler neck. You know, no corrosion, so everything pops apart. A little bit of dub D on there, and away we go. So we have our three hoses off. This one doesn't matter. This is from the uh, vent valve, so that one doesn't matter. But let's get our chainy jack. Get it right there. Let this baby down. Now we will have to unhook uh, the fuel pump electrical connector as well as the pressure sensor that's up there. So we'll let it down. Usually they give them enough hose. It's not a problem. I'm just kind of curious. It does have some fuel in it and these can get a little tippy. Let me just go up here and have a little gander. Just had to snake the vent hose for the rear diff that goes up there, the one we unhooked. It was kind of looped around the filler net, so I got that unlooped. Tell you what, let me go get the yellow stand. It feels like it's heavy on this end, which it's going to be one end of that where the fuel slash is. Stand by, folks. need this and we might not you just gotta be careful Want our letter sit steady right here we're going to unhook the electrical connectors here because they're about stretched tight get some kind of prying apparatus we'll get these unhooked so i'll get my face up here oh there you are this is fuel tank pressure sensor we've got a flick and a boom flick and a click we got to get the lock tab out of the uh, pump here. We're just feeling at this point. Feels like I got something. There it is, old son. I can't see that close up because I'm old. Older. Let her down a little bit. Oh, look at that. Napa just showed up. They went and got our parts from the Chevy garage. That's a pretty nice thing about Napa. Even if I don't buy parts from them, just to go get them. Only if it's from the dealer, because the dealer's close by to Napa. And I buy a lot of parts from Napa, so they do me a solid every now and then. All right, let me get my guy, Josh. We'll drop her down all the way. Whoa. <laughs> And it hits. <laughs> and, uh, and then we'll take an air hammer this baby off and pop the new one in and slide her back up in. That's how you know you're working on Chevy. Right from the factory. It's got the duct tape. That's sweet. Let's try this. Let's just move our little stand. <laughs> this is where this is where it's sketchy. Oh hang on, fella. Don't go falling down on the ground. I try to keep the weight on one side. It makes it more manageable than when it's sloshing. I'm gonna get my little work cart. Oh, there we go. 
Oh, there we go. That's not half bad at all, fella. Let her down, but keep it. Keep her on the downhill side. And now we can just do it right here and then right back up in. Bada bing, bada boom, huh? And we ain't worrying about getting on the floor. First thing first, air hammer. Step number one. Because, I'll tell you why, we're gonna need this pan. Proactive here. Move our stand. Because we need to blow it off, obviously, because of all the dirt. But let's air hammer and get some of this more dirt broke free. And then we'll blow it off, and then we'll take the ring off all the way. I like to use a dull chisel. I save one, particularly for these situations. And then just, just baby that trigger, just like it kiss your sister, just barely go around it. Whoa! Oh, yeah. <laughs> Easy. Come on, man. Now that we've knocked a little bit of it loose, let's see if we can't knock it loose. Oh, we did it. Oh, wow. First try. Well, she has a four-year-old truck, so what do you expect? Let's hold our hand over the holes, the open holes. Give it a little. That's that. Grab your hammer. Make sure you're using the brass part of your air hammer. So we don't make any sparks. Oh, it works. We've already gone all the way. We've gone all the way. We're going to want some prying apparatuses from the looks of it. Let's see. The dumb one's a little ear flicker. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Come on, man. Oh, we got pushed down on the little release. Wow, a double locker. Good job, GM. And of course, these are on upside down, making them highly convenient. Freaking jerks. Try to push them down from this side. <clears throat> Probably not gonna happen. Maybe it will. Maybe baby, that one did. Here, I'm calling them jerks. <clears throat> I'm only saying that because I can't see. I take my safety glasses off like that's gonna make things any clearer. Alright, I give up. Down to the Dollar General. Oh my goodness, this is so wonderful. It's so wonderful. Look at me, I can see. Doesn't mean I can do it any better. Look at that, first try. I can see clearly now. There's that line. And there's that line. Move them out of the way. Mmm, kumbaya. We did get a new lock room. Holy shnikes, this one's broke to all get out. You know how broke all get out gets. Whoa. Wait till you see this one, old son. Look at that. That thing's got more crack than downtown. See, it's broke, broke. Oh, it still fits out of the tank. That's good. Oop, oop, oop. Let me stick this in the bucket. Or just run this around the ring. Oh, it smells so good. Who loves the smell of gas? 
I do for about oh, 15 seconds. Man, it freaking stinks. And that's the point I'm at right now. That's the point I'm at right now. I'm at the man at freaking stinks point. Try to get all your dirt over here to one side. Not in the gas, a couple little flecks. It's actually, wow, it's remarkably clean in that tank. It's all white, white liner, white plastic. All right, so we just want to make sure that it's clean here where the O-ring sits. GM's always had really fantastic design. They always make sure the pump sits down inside of a well. So you get a nice, good layer of salt and dirt on. You know, good engineering. I'm not saying I could be an engineer, but if I was looking at failures that they repeat year after year after year after year, this would be one of them because this has been a problem since the mid 90s with General Motors. Been doing something wrong for 30 years, why stop now, right? <laughs> I haven't. I've been doing stuff wrong for 40 years. Okay, I know Gotta get these back. I'll tell you that if we got any kind of hope here And I'll be honest with you. I always buy these new so I rarely transfer them and I know they're awful squeaky creaky Let's see oh Yes, ma'am. I think I think I know Try that one back that one. Oh, yes, sir. Look at that Oh. We can't break it, that's all I know. You break it, you bought it, buddy. That's not true either. Oh, hooray for us, hooray, hooray. And then we have to unhook, not this one, but we'll get this one out of our way. Kind of a shame. Got a good pump. We're gonna throw it right in the trash. Welcome to America, son. There we are. One time around. Two times around. Three times around. There. We just saved them a hundred and some dollars for the fuel level sensor. Let's put that over here. Let's go get our new pump. Anybody want to take a closer examination at this? So you can see the little cracks underneath. Crack and a crack. Come up here, look at that. But you did that with the air hammer, you a-hole. Nope, I didn't. It was before we took it apart. You saw it. You witnessed it on video. There we go, folks. Let's ooh, try that again. Genuine DM. Original equipment. Shoo look at that. We need that for sure. That's guaranteed. Come on out. Guy, park caveman. There it is. We'll grab our level sensor. Let's slip you slide that one right back where we got it from. What's up, Andy? Nothing. Just driving by. What you doing? Oh, I. I see. I'm putting it all together. I'm using clues. Here's your clue. I'm looking around. I see a Chevy in the air. Ah. We got it. We couldn't break that part. It's uh, back ordered due to unprecedented circumstances. Supply chain issues. They seem more precedented now. Unprecedented? So. It's 
mostly pressed about it, I think. <laughs> is it? Right, we can't. That starts with a P, just like psoriasis. You told me that last That's time. right. Did we you, learned. I did learned you see my head? All healed up. It is? Oh, I haven't seen it in a while. I don't, I don't know where you've been. I tried calling you. You didn't call I me back. I got a call. You sounded pretty sad. It's okay. You're on Friday. <laughs> and then wait, you called wait. me back and said, oh, Andy, don't worry. Hi, how's it going? I didn't call you back because it was freaking late. Late? Yeah, when I, I got your, late. when I got your message. Oh, good point. And I, I was like, this guy gets up at 2 o'clock in the morning and go to work. Yeah. Should I call him? Maybe next time I will. I, I put it on do not disturb. You can't get through unless I want you to. I think if you cycle call, I think it'll go Oh, through. no, I shut that off. Oh, you did turn the it off? Okay. If you oh, do two okay. in a row? Yep. Yeah, oh, yeah, I went right in there and cut that oh, out. Okay, good I don't need any jabronis blowing call. up my phone and getting a hold of me for no reason. Hey, how's it going? Just calling you back, buddy. <laughs> gotcha. Yeah. I mean, I want to talk to you. It's just not that bad. I understand. I do believe that you said in your message that you wanted to... How are you supposed to get out of work by coming to watch me work when I'm not at yeah, work? Yeah, like okay. I had responsibilities that day and I was here looking for you so I could just watch you do stuff so you and hang out and talk and be like, oh, I don't know, I just had so much to do today, I didn't quite get my stuff done, you know, oh. that sort of thing. But Perfect. no, I had to go home and work. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. So, sorry to ruin your day. <laughs> yeah. Oh, Andy's a good egg. As far as eggs run. But then again, who likes running eggs? No, he's a good guy. Now, let's see. Put on my, you can see it glasses. I can see it now. Which way did this thing go? We'll say it went in. Well, it must have went in this way. I thought it came out differently than that. But it can only go one way if you want the hoses to line up. This is where our locator was before. Mm -hmm. Yeah, boy. Push, push, push. No, sir. <clears throat> the tank's getting a little tight up at the top, which is kind of nice because it holds the pump in for you. So it doesn't take, you don't have to call a friend. But the problem is when this thing needs to pump again here in a couple more years, uh, you might not put a tank in it because see what happens is the the metal here on top of the tank as that starts to rust it really puts the squeeze to it and what i found if the tabs are still good but you just can't get the factory pump in the aftermarket ones are usually a little bit smaller you know what i mean and they'll usually fit aftermarket pumps are pretty well junk um so i like the oems usually i, I get these oems cheaper than we get aftermarket anyways like this pump is probably fifty dollars cheaper than what you could get it for at napa you know for like a carter or you know a name brand pump so I'll think about that just sit there and think about it for a minute That's what i say to my kids <laughs> oh yeah oh yeah that one's on that one's on we just gotta get something to lock that one on. Mother lover. We need that a little bit more here, fella. There she goes. And a boy. Now we've gone all the way. We're good, that's it. And yes, that is a brass chisel. Brooks USA. Oh, Brooksy, you haven't seen him in a while. Full line of brass beating apparatuses. Great company, handmade right here in America. Uh, it's time to jack this thing back up. Get her plugged back in. 
We have a look at our pluggers. Give them a little. I like to do that. A little bit of good luck. You breathe on there. Good luck. <laughs> okay. I'll pull my britches up. It's hot and humid out today. So that makes my pants fall down. And I don't have a butt. So that makes my pants fall down too. And I need to do some squats. Probably not. Whoa, this is sketchy. I'm gonna get my guy Josh just because I really don't feel like dropping this on the ground today. Alright, shoot. Josh, I don't know if it's easier to be out there or in here or whatever is good for you. Good? Yep. Lines on a sort of stink straps on. There's one. These are different front to back, just FYI. And the difference is pretty noticeable, so I don't think you can screw it up. Usually, the second time around, we'll put new straps on it because they'll be all rotted out underneath the plastic. Torque wrench and grab those in just a minute. Well, we're right here. I gotta do one of these little guys. So we'll unhook that. Spin this fella off. Gas dribbles out of there. We're gonna leave that factory O-ring right on the bottom there. Still feels like it's got good resistance. Snug that up. I did hook up the fuel filler neck already. Put the hose clamps back on that in a manner in which you can actually get them back off <laughs> easily. Uh, so all we have left now is to put dry shaft in it. Um, so we can go ahead and do that because I'm pretty confident that uh, we're not gonna end up dropping the tank back down for anything. And that looks like that. So put the clamps on where you can actually get to them, you know, if you have to in the future. And I'm gonna throw a zip tie just back around these here. So you, this is your vent for the rear diff and then this one's for the fuel tank. So, all right. I don't know how many of you guys have these SK X beam. I think they're called them X beams. I've had insanely bad luck with them. Like this one. 
they just they don't grab like I can just hold it and you know there's no more ratcheting mechanism and it's just very random like I try spraying WD in them but yeah so now now this one just free wheels they're always good about replacing them I just I call them up they never want proof or anything they just send me new ones in the mail but it's kind of super annoying because they're they're a really cool look I mean they're a cool looking wrench but they have a good hand feel because they're you know they're wide but they just continually break like this one like that I'm just holding that center there's no more <laughs> it's Mr. Floppy now so so that one's cheap and we, we didn't even use it to break these bolts loose as you guys seen and let's be honest how often do you use an 11 millimeter <laughs> so I don't know I'm not sold on them I've broke a lot of them almost every I don't want to say every time I use them but usually if I use them three or four times they're broke <laughs> maybe I just got a really bad batch but I guess with that being said I would never tell anybody to buy them I guess is what I'm getting at so if you're considering some wrenches in the ratcheting variety uh, I wouldn't buy those I've had really great luck with gear wrench as in there um, ratcheting wrenches but I really like those SK I really wanted to like them but I'm thinking at this point I'm taking them out of my toolbox and I'll just take them home and good place to put them is where you never need them <laughs> I'm thinking it's kind of weird too because SK makes some fantastic tools but those ratchet wrenches are not on that list of uh, fantastic tools in my opinion so this old Chevy needs some u-joints this, this rear u-joints starting to get a little bit of a stiffy um, which is probably going to result in replacing the entire drive shaft so as you guessed it with the aluminium here in the PRNY salt 12 months out of the year the aluminium disappears and I'll show you I'll show you what will happen if you try to put a u-joint in this we get a pointing apparatus it may be wrong but let's have a look so usually right around the clip these things will start to disappear to the point they can't hold the clip no more see how this clips already half broke all right that side's not too terrible But what will happen oftentimes, you take that clip out, you give that U-joint a couple whacks, this outer edge starts to disappear. Yeah, see there's not much retaining the clip in right now. I mean, even just with this little pick, I can, I can lift that clip right up out of the groove, okay? See? There, there's nothing really retaining this U-joint in right now other than corrosion. So the problem becomes, you know, you take the U-joint out here, you know, we take her out take the clips off boom knock it out you go put the new one in now you're, you can't retain your clips because it's all gone the whole outer edge is is MIA they're very very thin of course they have to be you know it's just the way the way they are and hence, hence so I don't know if you guys can really tell or not but there's really nothing no outer edge covering up this this clip on the shoe joint everything's just pus holding hands <laughs> I guess if you will Hence. So, in that case, what you do is you just replace the whole drive shaft. Uh, either have one made at a drive shaft shop so they'll make it out of steel, um, or just buy a new one uh, from GM. This thing's pretty bad. I think it's got more craters in my face. But that uh, must have held together. So, you just get a new one from General Motors, probably such a bag, I don't know, five to eight hundred dollars, who knows. Last, but certainly not least, We've got this little guy, we'll stick back on there. I looked in service data on how to uh, get that little donger off. And it wasn't in there. The only, way, the only thing they showed is when you're replacing the cable is to do it just like we're doing it. So I don't know if that comes with the cable or what. So I'll put this on and we'll snug that back up. And then we'll get the uh, torque wrench and finish it off. What's up? What? What's up? <laughs> I just have to come see you. I'm gonna leave 
because you miss me. That and what did the brush guard guy say? He made arrangements for somebody else to do it. Oh, good. The shop that put the brush guard on. Oh, great. And what did the Jeep guy say? Uh, thanks for the tip. He's going to try that first. Oh, good. Then he'll call us. If it doesn't work out. It won't. You, what? <laughs> Well, there's Luna back there. I don't like you, Gibby. She's tired. Gibby, Gibby, Gibby. She don't want to look at us. No, no. She's pretty tired. It looks like it. All right, well, it was nice talking to you. That's just kind of what I was curious about. Everything I like that. Love you. We're all done with this truck. Good job. Thanks. We need to go wash our patties. He was humming back there. Just in case you don't believe me, let's uh, turn it off. Let's go key on. Shut the headlights off. Let's go over to our pool here. Go to live data. Oh shoot, I lost my cleaning apparatus. Where is it? I think it's all over here. There it is. And where were we? Fuel, right? Fuel system. We should have pressure now, fellas. Oh, we do. Fuel pressure sensor is okay. 56 psi. This is not right. This data list is messed up. Sometimes Altel does this when you do it no communication and you don't go back out and back in. Because none of those should have been red. And it was saying desired fuel pressure was in a voltage spec. There we go. Desired fuel pressure, fuel pressure sensor, PSIs. And there it is. Let's go ahead and fire that up again, now that we see that. And our actual and desired should match, or be pretty close. And they're pretty close. Real close. So there we are, so that's all good. Let's wipe the codes out of this thing. And then we're gonna go key on engine off. Sometimes you gotta do Chevy's twice. All right, and then we'll go to active tests. We're gonna go back into emissions. We're gonna shut the vent valve off. We wanna see this thing building some pressure. Hopefully. We might have to pour out into the sunshine. We'll see. Shut her off and back on. Turn your headlights off. Codes are cleared. Let's go to not venting. Cancer vent valve is closed, and we want to look at our pressure. And that should gradually start to increase. It's probably going to be slow because the fuel tank's not that warm. But we can see that we're gradually increasing slow and steady. So that tells me our tank's all sealed up. Now when we vent it, that should go back to atmospheric pressure. Ready? We all the way back down. To whatever its default is, so 0.17 inches of water. And then close it again. It's not venting. And then that'll start to increase. And if we wait a while, it'll go up really high. But we're not going to wait because we're impatient. So we'll let it vent again back to atmospheric. So we're all done. We verified we fixed everything, and everybody's happy. I'm happy, you're happy, the customer's happy. At least I hope you're happy, because I know I am. The only other thing that makes me happy is seeing your comment in that comment section. Questions, comments, concerns, the Insta, the Facebook. We're around on those, not much other ones. Definitely not TikTok. And um, I don't know what else to do. Got to keep on. Got some more stuff to fix, and it's almost the end of the day. So just remember, viewers, if I can do it, you can do it. 
Thanks for watching.